India is set to welcome many world leaders to the G20 summit in Delhi, barring two, Russian President Vladimir Putin and Chinese President Xi Jinping. Their non-attendance could complicate efforts at arriving at a joint communique at a summit where divisions over the Ukraine war will loom large. Let's go back in time for a minute to November 2022 at the last G20 summit in Bali. There was high drama at the opening ceremony, and this was a dramatic event, with the war in Ukraine dividing the world. The host, Indonesia's president, Joko Widodo, made a powerful appeal. Stop the war. I repeat, stop the war. The diplomacy was intense. Joe Biden and Xi Jinping met for the first time in years. And against all the odds, the summit achieved a full communique with strong wording on the war. And with that, it was India's turn. Since then, the war has kept raging on and the world has got even more divided, leaving India with the massive diplomatic challenge of getting the G20 to come together this time around. This is the man in the middle. India's main negotiator, or Sherpa, spoke to DW this week. The challenge is to discuss with all 20 players and finally arrive at an agreement. Everybody has a veto power. And that's what makes the job very challenging. So we'll do our best. This is meant to be India's moment in the sun, chairing the G20 for the first time. It's positioned itself as the voice of the global south standing up for issues that matter to the developing world. Six of the 12 fastest growing countries in the world today are from Africa. So the Prime Minister has pushed for African Union to become a permanent member of G20. Uh, this has had a huge, a very uh, big uh, support from all the leaders of the world and hopefully we'll see African Union uh, becoming a permanent member. But geopolitical divisions still overshadow all of this. Xi Jinping is not even showing up. Xi's decision not to come to Delhi is being seen as a real snub to India and as a risk to chances of a breakthrough on Ukraine. The pressure on Narendra Modi and his negotiating team is intense. The Ukraine issue may be important to some countries, some part of the world, but it's not an important issue for many other countries. All the developing countries, emerging countries, for all of us, we've not created the Ukraine war. Let us not bring one issue of a war which is going on for one and a half years in Europe center stage on every other issue of the world. You can sense real frustration that India is stuck in the middle of a crisis that is not its fault. And yet that's the reality of the divided world that we're living in. So this weekend's summit will be a test not just of India, but of whether the world is in any fit state to overcome its divisions. And joining me now for more from Singapore is Professor Kanti Bajpai. He's an expert in international security and India's foreign policy and currently at the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy in Singapore. Professor Bajpai, as G20 host, what is India looking to achieve at this G20 summit? Well, above all, of course, uh, consensus on major issues. Secondly, I think a showcasing of India quite clearly that's been on for uh, the entire year or so that India has been uh, chairperson. Uh, and I think uh, thirdly, uh, greater inclusiveness in the proceedings in the years ahead. There's talk, for instance, of the African Union being given a permanent seat now at the G20, which I suppose will make it a G21 ahead. So I think those are three very clear uh, hopes for the future. Uh, and underlying it all is uh, a developmental agenda. I think that Mr. Modi and many of the countries of the Global South that are represented here, as well as countries of the Global North, uh, hope to achieve. So I think those three or four things would be uh, vital. It's not all festivity and, and positivity, of course, and uh, there are challenges. I'd like to speak about one of them, uh, particularly about the point on consensus. How likely is it that there's going to be consensus and how likely is it that there is going to be a joint statement, statement given the divisiveness over the Ukraine war? Well, I suspect that in many areas there will be consensus, particularly in respect to developmental issues, probably climate change, those kinds of uh, issues. 
I mean, the origins of the G20 is economic, going back to the 2008 financial crisis. So if there's consensus on a largely economic financial agenda, then that's pretty good. Um, but of course, the Ukraine war uh, and the geopolitics surrounding that, that's the real challenge for a consensus statement and a joint uh, communique ahead. All signs are that that's going to be very, very difficult. What will India count as a successful uh, summit? Well, as I said, I mean, I think if uh, uh, the economic agenda is largely accepted, and if, as well, India manages to pull off a, a good kind of uh, event, uh, it's showcased uh, various parts of India throughout uh, the year. And thirdly, if, as I said, um, also, um, there's acceptance of greater inclusiveness of the global south in the years ahead, mm -hmm. particularly Africa. Africa has five or seven of the fastest growing economies uh, in the world and a huge demographic as well. So I think uh, India will certainly pat itself on the back if uh, it makes a big push for African inclusion and participation in, in future deliberations. It's also a G20 the Chinese President Xi Jinping won't be attending. Do you think that will have any impact on how this summit uh, pro progresses? It certainly cast a shadow. Um, there was talk of uh, Mr. Modi meeting uh, Xi Jinping. That's not going to happen, obviously. Uh, this comes just after the uh, BRICS meeting where both were present. So it does seem like a bit of a rebuff to uh, New Delhi. Uh, and that will have to be written out quite clearly. Um, I think uh, President Biden was hoping to meet Xi Jinping as well. And so his not being uh, present affects, uh, you know, certain calculations that the Americans had. And, you know, by extension, the world, because everybody does want the Americans and the Chinese to get along better. So these are shadows. Of course, Mr. Putin was never expected to come. But right. you really have two very big leaders absent at this uh, summit. Uh, having said that, I mean, I think one has to remember also that you know, these G20s are not just about the external, they're also about the internal. And I think certainly the Indian government has used this to um, to look good in front of its own population. And so I think, uh, barring any real uh, snafus or mishaps or missteps, uh, this will certainly be uh, sold uh, successfully within India to Indian public opinion. And, you know, that let's not get away from the domestic politics of these meetings. And I do want to talk to you about the domestic politics of these uh, meetings. How significant is it that India is less than a year away for a general election that this summit is being held in Delhi? Well, it is significant. I mean, if I remember correctly, India should have held the last uh, G20 uh, going alphabetically, but it swapped with Indonesia and much of the talk has been that it swapped uh, because it wanted to be uh, the uh, the summit to be in in uh, you know in the uh, in line for the elections next year, um, and campaigning is already pretty much in full swing in India, uh, you know, and the controversy over the name of India, Bharat versus India. Right. I mean, I think this is being played out quite a bit. So you know, there's a bit of a domestic politics shadow over this summit, which we didn't see in Indonesia, to be honest. So um, that um, that is a difference uh, from the previous uh, summit. We'll leave it there for the time being. Thanks so much for joining us today. Professor Kanti Bajpai. And security measures have been tightened ahead of the summit and the government has gone to great lengths to beautify the capital. But it's come at a cost. Thousands of slum dwellers have been forcefully evicted and their homes and shelters demolished. Billboards, sidewalks and walls. It's hard to navigate the streets of New Delhi these days without seeing the preparations for the upcoming summit. The city is gearing up to welcome the G20 leaders. In this popular Delhi neighborhood, a group of artists are painting graffiti on the walls. Local artists have been commissioned by the government to beautify the city ahead of the summit. Chautanlal Meena is in charge here. Artwork is a form of celebration, and by doing this, we are welcoming the members of the G20. In showing India's beauty, we are putting on a great show of welcome. Across the capital, some are busy planting trees and dressing the city in green, while others are painting roads and flyovers. 
and all these roads lead us to one destination, the main venue, Bharat Mandapam, where the summit will take place. This is where the leaders will discuss pressing global issues. But for many, this beautification has come at the cost of displacement and loss of livelihood. Since the start of G20 preparations, thousands of houses and small shops have been demolished. Bira Lal and his family are among those who have been made homeless by the beautification drive. They now live under a flyover. Because leaders of important countries are coming to the G20 summit, the government does not want the slums and shanties to be visible. But then, they should rehouse us. Today, activist Sunil Kumar and his colleague are meeting the homeless to provide them with legal assistance. There's no one to listen to them or rehouse them. Their homes were demolished straight away. As an organization, we want them to be given back homes, provided with concrete brick houses, and to have the rights of their children and family members ensured. In some parts of the city, authorities have even covered slums with green curtains and iron grills in an attempt to hide the misery of the poor. For Prime Minister Narendra Modi, this G20 summit is an opportunity to raise India's profile on the world stage and position it as an economic powerhouse. And the government clearly thinks Delhi slums do not fit that profile. While the summit may end up being a success, the cost for the city's poor has come at a high price.